and we're going to mention one other thing that's that's a huge uh, part to this narrative of what is money, because as mentioned at the beginning of the video, look, this is our nerdy passion. We've actually been reading history books on on the dynamic reality and changes of money as an institution and what it's come from. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's really mm -hmm. fun for us to be able to kind of talk about how it fits or doesn't fit into this new narrative with ease because we've been following this kind of information for, for many years. And another aspect of money when it comes to this is um, not just a store of value and uh, a unit of account, uh, uh, pardon me, I, I I lost my train of thought. So well, we'll I'll, I'll fill it in because I know I kind of think I know where you're going. It is uh, it's the it's it's a we've had various monetary oh, legal regimes. tender. Pardon me. Okay, thank well you. they're going to legal tender. Gotcha. I was gonna I was going to legal tender. I was saying that um th that's where I was going. We do finish each other's sentences often when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> so let let me uh, just go that we all know that gold has value, silver has value, and at one point. They were money, but gold has been demonetized. People buy gold. People may exchange gold. Uh, there are places that sell gold, but they sell it uh, all, like you said, accounted in, in dollar terms. And dollars are what is money. Gold is not money. Silver is not money. And they're more stable. Arguably, they are a lot more stable than Bitcoin or digital assets. So the For idea sure. that... Um, that, that that checking Bitcoin, one or two of these boxes gives you a gives you to money is not enough. It has it needs to be all right, and not just a store of value, but it also needs to be a unit of account and a, and a widely accepted medium of exchange. And gold and silver check more of those boxes than digital assets do. Absolutely. So um, that's that's just the money part. And now, now, if you're an attorney and you're representing a blockchain project or or uh, a layer, pretty much any layer one uh, for that matter, mm -hmm. um, it's it's important to know that many, many places never received an investment of money in order to start their project. Right. And this isn't a bad thing. This is actually one of the neat features of this new technology is that it's it's niche, it's small, it's emerging. And it hasn't really taken that much out of the, the mainstream economy. There's been a lot of internal value created and developed and spread around, uh, moved around within the Web3 digital economy to incentivize production, to incentivize, to naturally incentivize development right. in, in this new ecosystem. But you'll even find, I think that with Ethereum and most ICOs, uh, I believe that they were not asking for people to donate money like like a no, your debit card credit it was bitcoin and the reality is that if you start looking at all these blockchain projects getting their birth from bitcoin as the seed and bitcoin isn't money it's just this new digital value token that allows for other digital value tokens to to be uh up to emerge and to kind of be judged against that Bitcoin standard, which is what, what started it all, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's transaction time, it's its ability to right. process that many. And people say, well, we need something faster. Oh, we need something that can perform smart contracts. So, so Bitcoin created and still uh, holds a foundation and, and a standard for security and blockchain operations, but it's never been money. So many projects, right. if you look at the whole of, of uh, projects that started with investment in Bitcoin or Algorand say, uh, give us your Algorand, give us your Ethereum, give us your Avalanche, give us, you're not, they're not asking for money. They're asking for digital game tokens in this new emerging economy right. who, who, who are, everyone knows, everyone knows is that it's that Algorand's not money or that, right. that any of these aren't money and that they're too volatile. So that's, to, that's to the serve as that function. Well, there's one uh, more thing before we before we walk off from that, because there's okay. one more point that I think needs to be made. And it's not narrowly economic. It's getting into the political sphere, but I think it's still relevant. We You mentioned that we've had previous monetary regimes, that that gold and silver was demonetized. You could And that's the 33 FDR period. You could look to Nixon and then 71 when the gold window was closed. Um, and, and in both those major changes, in the rules of money, you could say. Both of those instances involved executive actions that were later codified by congressional oversight and passed in, and passed through a legislative um, interaction, right? So it wasn't just a, a single branch of government making this decision. 
unilaterally, right? In this mm -hmm. case, it's not even an executive order. We're looking at just Gary Gensler, the SEC chairman, right? But right. so my point is, is that it should never be up to one person to decide something so big and and, and important and 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 as what is the definition of money. And if and if That's we huge. are going to inc include digital assets under that umbrella, I do think to in keeping with the democratic uh, norms of, you know, of Republican democracy and, uh, that it should be something that's done through the, through the congressional legislative process and not something that somebody just arbitrarily makes law through their, whim, through their individual unilateral whim. That's, that, that, that's a great point. You're right. Th that needs to be made before we move on. Um, never before in history has, has just a random official that happens to be in, a bureaucrat that happens to be in charge of the SEC or CFTC or anywhere be able, have they been able to write a paper that subversively creates through through definitions uh, a new money when when money is something that we, we go off of legal tender at the moment. Legal tender is money and has been for quite some time. And and like you said, that uh, came through our current you know Federal Reserve system. These were done through acts of Congress, and there's um, a lot more, a lot more goes into this decision than just uh, a Howey test perspective yeah. from a, a serving SEC chairman. So does he have the authority? Does Gary Gensler have the power just by suing people through the SEC? And I guess attorneys should be asking judges this wherever uh, around the world. How is it that the SEC chairman can just determine all of a sudden that digital assets are money when um, they, in many ways, don't pass the the, the money standard? Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Legal tender. One more th one more thing to add to that. If he does have the power to do that, and it they do become money, that do does that not threaten what we call monetary sovereignty? With the the ability of a nation to control its monetary policy, because if there are these if there are these money assets that are that are a cross border, um, you know, scare, uh, based in uh, distribution, based in code, you know, where the inflation is at a certain rate, you know, there that's taking a lot of the monetary discretion out of the hands of the central bank, putting it into the hands of of cryptocurrency enthusiasts, and I don't know that that the Fed or the Treasury or you know would be would be on board with that because you know monetary sovereignty is kind of important to this whole right. thing working right so, and, okay. and now that's it <laughs> that being said yeah that being said you you it's easy to have a digital asset a new property a, a new area of the economy emerge that has value you're not saying um that the the, the, the market that the ability that this technology that allows people to exchange value borderless that this this is a great technology and has yes Many has shown already to have many uses, but to declare any one of these or a group of these as legal tender as money takes away a lot of the um, policy power and that we're used to seeing in modern yeah. banking system. That and not that that and not that we automatically oppose that, but it needs to be done in a thoughtful way, right? We don't. It doesn't need to be the the whim of one person, right? It needs to right. be integrated, studied voted on, you know, and done in a rational way. Uh, but that being said, obviously, when we do come to that way, hopefully money is still something that can serve as a store of value and isn't highly volatile. I mean, the reality is digital yeah. assets, blockchain, crypto, not one of them could could count as, um, as, as money in and of themselves. Hope you enjoyed that clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscription, notification bell if you want to get the latest drops. Of course, all of this is educational entertainment information to help you in your journey, learning more about blockchain and how to participate. None of this is financial advice, investment advice. However, if you'd like to learn more about blockchain and crypto, we've got plenty of videos and playlists as well that walk you through DeFi tutorials, how to get involved. And if you'd like some more one-on-one -on -one help, Check out our website, wisebeyondbitcoin.com. We've got plenty of free sources, resources for you to scroll through and check out in your journey, your blockchain crypto journey. Of course, you can also drop us a line. Let us know what you'd like to learn about. Time is money. Knowledge is power. 
benefit from our experience. Let us know what you'd like to learn more about. We'd be happy to help you. Until the next time, have a beautiful day. Namaste, y'all.